Did you know that there is an investment strategy out there that is over 1,500 years old and has performed even better than the S&P 500 or the traditional 60-40 portfolio? If you want to know what I'm talking about, what that portfolio is about and how you can simply build it yourself, then watch this video till the very end. Let's go. What's up everyone, this is FU Academy, your channel for financial education and on this channel I share lifestyle, investing style and educational videos just like this one. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. So I read this wonderful book, Common Sense on Mutual Funds by Jack Bogle the other day and anyone who doesn't know who Jack Bogle is, he's the founder of Vanguard and father of index investing. He's the guy that you can see on this poster and as I was reading his book, I came across a section on modern portfolio strategy and that in portfolio construction, simpler is often better. There was one section in particular that sparked my interest. More than 14 centuries ago, the Talmud prescribed this simple asset allocation strategy. A man should always keep his wealth in three forms, one third in real estate, another in merchandise and the remainder in liquid assets. But what is Talmud? Talmud is the written version of Jewish oral law and commentaries on it. It can be seen as a source of truth for Jewish people. I'm not an expert in this by any means. So if you know more about Talmud, then please let me know in the comment section below. So I did a bit more research on Jack Bogle's quote and found another slightly different translation on the asset distribution. Let every man divide his money into three parts and invest a third in land instead of real estate, a third in business instead of merchandise, and a third let him keep by him in reserve instead of liquid assets. I thought this one makes more sense, so I went ahead with that translation. What you can get out of this quote is that you can invest your money into three different asset classes, land, business, and reserve. But like most historical writings, it's almost impossible to translate it one-to-one -one into today's world. Let's take a look at the first asset class, reserve. The wording keep by him in reserve could point towards liquid assets. Today, that's cash, but over a thousand years ago, that was gold. So if we want to be strict here, we have to look at both cash and gold. Let's take a look at asset number two of the Talmud portfolio, business. That's the most straightforward one. You could start your own business or just invest in them through the stock market. And last but not least, asset number three, land. One translation that seems very straightforward is real estate, but some sources translate this part as burying a third in the ground instead of investing investing a third in land. If you think about it, over a thousand years ago, there was no banking system where people could just go and park their money. So to keep their wealth safe, people would have to hide it or bury it in the ground. In today's world, government bonds are considered the safest investment. That's why we will also include it as a possible asset class for the Talmud portfolio. So as you can see, it's not super straightforward to translate the Talmud portfolio into today's world. There are different ways to interpret the old text. We identified five asset classes from which you can build three different portfolios. The first portfolio includes a third cash, a third stocks, and a third government bond bonds as safe asset. In the second Talmud portfolio, I replaced bonds with real estate and in portfolio number three, I replaced cash with gold because gold was the cash equivalent back then. Here you can see how those asset classes individually have performed in the past. So let's take a quick look at how you can invest into those five asset classes before we look at the performance of the three different Talmud portfolios. First up, we have stocks. Here you can use Vanguard's total stock market ETF, ticker symbol of V. VTI. The VTI covers pretty much 100% of the investable US stock market. By the way, if you want to see my review video on the, this ETF, then check out my dedicated video in the link. But in general, I would advise everyone to invest in a global ETF to be more diversified. To do that, you could go for Vanguard's Total Wealth Stock ETF, which I reviewed in the video in the link. Next up, bonds. For this one, you could go for the iShares 20 plus year treasury bond ETF, ticker symbol TLT. The next one is cash. You could have cash under your pillow or in your bank account, or you could invest in ultra short-term bonds like three months treasury bills. Here, you could go for BlackRock's SGOV ETF. Next up, real estate. 
Here, you could own your own physical property. What you could also do is invest in real estate ETFs or REITs. I already reviewed the best two real estate ETFs in the video in the link. And last but not least, gold. Again, here you could go for physical gold or you can simply invest in a gold ETF that tracks the gold spot price. For that, you could go for the Spider Gold Trust, which is by far the largest gold ETF. Right, let's look at the performance of the three Talmud portfolios. I looked at their performance since 94, 1994, is right in the middle of two crashes, the 1987 Black Monday crash and the dot-com crash. Also, 28 years of data will give us a nice database to play around with. Let's look at portfolio number one, which consists of a third cash, a third stocks and a third bonds. Cash is based on the three-month treasury bill. Stocks are based on Vanguard's total stock market index, which tracks US stocks. And government bonds are based on Vanguard's total bond market index. You can see that this portfolio would have grown very steady. Not a whole lot of volatility here. An initial investment of $10,000 in 94 would have grown to $49,000 today. Not bad. That's an annual return before inflation of 5.8%. Let's compare that to portfolio number two, which consists of a third cash, a third stocks, and a third real estate. The real estate data is based on Vanguard's REIT index fund. And you can see that by only swapping bonds with real estate, you get a very different portfolio performance. An initial investment of $10,000 would have grown to $78,000 today, so much more performance here. That's an annual return before inflation of 7.5%. And last but not least, portfolio number three, which consists of a third gold, a third stocks, and a third real estate. The gold data is based on the Spider Gold Shares ETF, which tracks the gold spot price. And that one has been the best performing Talmud portfolio. So only swapping cash with gold would have gotten you a much better return. This portfolio would have grown to over $107,000 today. That's an annual return before inflation of 8.7%, the highest one out of the three. Just as a comparison, if you would have invested all your money into US stocks, that would have gotten you a return of 9.5% and the 60-40 portfolio which allocates 60% into stocks and 40% into bonds would have gotten you a return of 7.9%. So the Talmud portfolios were not too far off here. Now it's one thing for an asset class to have a higher return but what's also important is how risky an asset class is. In a perfect world you would own assets that get you a high return and that are absolutely safe but an asset like that does not exist. It's all about the right balance between between return and the risk that you are taking on. One way to measure the risk adjusted return of an investment is the Sharpe ratio. The Sharpe ratio is the return earned above the risk free rate per unit of volatility. To get to your Sharpe ratio, you take the return of your asset, subtract the risk free rate and divide that by the volatility of the asset. Let's go through a quick example. Let's say you own a stock that gets you a return of 10% per year. Some investors use the T-bill for the risk free rate, but I use the 10 year treasury rate, which is currently 3.09%. Let's update the formula. In this case, our return above the risk-free rate is 6.91%. And let's imagine that the volatility of our stock is 10%. That would give us a Sharpe ratio of 0.691. What we are looking for is something that has a really small denominator compared to its numerator. In other words, the higher the Sharpe ratio, the better. Coming back to our Talmud portfolio, portfolio number one, which consists of cash, stocks and bonds, had a Sharpe ratio of 0.68. Portfolio number two, which invests in cash, stocks and real estate, had a Sharpe ratio of 0.54. And last but not least, portfolio number three, which holds gold, stocks and real estate, had a Sharpe ratio of 0.58. So although portfolio number one did not generate the highest return, it still gave the highest stability. Again, if you compare that to US stocks, they had a sharp ratio of 0.53 over the same time frame, and the 60-40 portfolio had a sharp ratio of 0.63. So Talmud portfolio number one would have gotten you the highest return relative to the risk that you are taking on. There you have it, the Talmud portfolio. There are not a lot of portfolios out there that produce similar returns to the S&P 500 whilst beating the index in terms of risk-adjusted return. This one is one of them. But what do you actually think? Is that a portfolio you would feel comfortable investing in? Which Talmud portfolio would you go for? As always, let me know in the comment section below. I hope that this video could bring some value to you if you like what you saw and you want to support this channel, then please make sure you subscribe. Thank you very much for doing that and peace.